I would like to call the March 2nd, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please call the roll. Top best. I'm here. Thank you. Um, Smithwick Ailey. Anderson. Here. Barton. Here. Baba. Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? Are there any objections to approving the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. And this is the meeting minutes for February 20. February 2nd, 2022, our last meeting. Are there any changes to the minutes that we've all read and letter by letter made sure it's all correct? Are there any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Um, there are no presentations with prior notice, public hearings, or unfinished business. There is some new business. Resolution PZ 2022-004 recommending approval of the Business Center Subdivision 2022 replat. May I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve Resolution PZ 2022-004. Awesome. May I have a second? I second. Thank you. May we have the staff report, please? Staff report starts on page six of the printed packet. The applicant, Johnson Surveys, on behalf of BEEZ LLC, submitted the application on February 4th, 2022. The proposed preliminary plat for the Business Center Subdivision 2022 replat intends to transfer 0.499 acres from Lot 3A to Lot 1. Currently, Lot, lot 1, which is parcel 0593457, is developed with medical offices. Tract 3A, which is parcel 0593463, is vacant. These parcels are in the commercial zoning district along with the parcels immediately to the north, east, south, and west. Also to the north lies unincorporated land with no zoning. Legal access to proposed lot 1A is gained by the Kenai Spur Highway. Legal access to proposed lot 3A1 is provided by a portion of Night Drive, which is platted, but is not built to Kenai Peninsula Borough standards and is not maintained by the city. Lot 1's medical office building at 35670 Kenai Spur Highway currently is served by parking that extends across the property line is Track 3A. So Dot and Useful Code 1710-330 requires that parking be provided on the same lot as the use it serves or on an adjacent parcel with a cross parking agreement that is written and recorded with the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Kenai Recording Office. This replat would correct the off-street parking and loading area by expanding the size of the parcel so that the parking area that serves Lot 1 is solely within Lot 1A. Municipal water and sewer are provided to Tract 1, and both municipal water and sewer are available to Lot 3A. The preliminary plats for Lot 1A and Lot 3A1 meet the minimum lot size with coverage, maximum building height, and minimum yard setbacks listed in section 1710-265 of the Soldotna Municipal Code for the Commercial Zoning District. The, the plat was circulated for city staff to review, and we did have a comment from our utility manager, Mike Allen. He stated that the sewer manhole and utility boxes depicted on the preliminary plat are not owned by the city. They're privately owned, they're owned by the lot um, or by the medical offices. Um, and you can see this on figure four of the staff report on page 10 of the packet. The service lines that were constructed and these service lines are viewed on page nine. Um, the service lines that were constructed to connect to city water and sewer mains were not to city standards and they are private. Um, and that's figure two. The city's water main terminates prior to proposed lot 1A, and that's in figure three, so this bottom figure. So the city's water main terminates prior to proposed lot 1A. And so Mike Allen also stated that the existing sewer line, manhole, and lift station located on lot 1A connected to the city sewer do not comply with city standards. 
and the city's sewer main terminates prior to the proposed lot 1A. The city of Soldatna does not maintain nor is responsible for any improvements or maintenance on the existing private utilities. As these private utilities are not necessary to the replat and may con cause confusion to ownership, a request to have those depictions removed from the preliminary plat is included in the resolution. 19 public notices were mailed on February 8, 2022. No comments have been received at the time this report was drafted. So staff finds that the preliminary plat for the business center subdivision 2022 replat meets the general standards for the Soldatna Municipal Code and therefore recommends approval subject to the following conditions that the depictions of privately owned utility boxes and the privately owned sewer manhole be removed from the plat. Thank you. All right. Are there any questions for staff? My only question uh, for staff is that this is this gray zone, um, which other properties sort of have. They live, uh, or they not live. They exist within the city of Soldatna, um, or maybe a little bit outside the city of Soldatna, and either they do or don't have access to city water. And so this is one of those pieces of property that's inside the city limits. Um, and but it does is not served by um, municipal water and sewer. Is that correct? No, sorry. So I'm I'm sorry if I didn't explain. No, this very you well. probably did. I just missed it. <laughs> the they they do receive both city water and sewer. Oh, okay, um, okay. The only thing is that there are private extensions from the main that connect from our water mains, our public water mains, to the to the service these service lines. Those um, are not owned by the city. They're, okay. they're, they're not of the same material or size that we typically use for our mains. Mm -hmm. And so even though they're pretty long, and that's also a little bit of an irregularity mm -hmm. for um, private services. And so we were just calling that out because on the plat, which this is unusual for plats to include. I'm sh as you guys have seen mm -hmm. quite a few plats now, we don't normally see... Sometimes we don't normally see buildings, but let alone utility boxes and sewer manholes called out. Because they were called out, our concern was for there to be confusion that these were owned by the city when they aren't up to our standards and they are not owned by the city, they're private. Okay. Yeah, so, so typically plats just have lot lines and they don't include these, these types of, um, I don't know, additional whatever you call sewer and utility lines. That's exactly okay. correct. Yeah, the, the only thing I was worried about is if they th were typically included, then um, having them in as many places as possible just so that there wouldn't be any oversight would be good. But if it's not usually included, then all my questions are answered. Thanks. And we had a debate um, whether it was better to have a, have a note on the plat stating that they were private or just to remove them. And at the end of the day, John and Mike Allen decided that it was better just to remove it to remove confusion because they're not normally seen on plats. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Public comment period. Sorry. Public comment period is now open. Um, and Charlene, I, I don't want to, sometimes Zoom is tricky. So if you have anything um, to add, please just pipe, pipe in. Um, for those participating through Zoom, please raise your hand if you'd like to comment. And um, Star 9 gets you on your telephone. But with no one wishing to speak, the public comment period is now closed. Are there any commission comments? All right. Uh, just call for the vote. Top best. Uh, yes. Anderson. Yes. Burton. Yes. And Bob Ross. Yes. All right, if there are any other public comments without prior notice, now is the time, but we don't have anyone else on line, so we're good. Um, reports, thanks for joining us. Member Chilson, Jordan. <laughs> okay, 
Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so just kind of to update you all on some of the recent ongoings from the City Council uh, back through the month of February. Um, we've recently held um, two sequential work sessions during the last month um, as part of our ongoing efforts to find a replacement clerk for the City of Slobotna. Um, at this point in time, we have found one candidate, uh, Sandra Modai, who is a uh, former clerk for the City of Kenai, who we are currently uh, beginning contract negotiations with, and hopefully we'll have a, a new clerk uh, moving forward here in the near future. Um, also, as you know, we have, um, we'd previously submitted a grant to the Economic Development Administration to uh, hopefully get some funding to uh, go through the planning process for the riverfront area of the city. Um, we are still waiting for a uh, word back on, on that application. However, uh, we are hoping to hear uh, hopefully some conclusive news on that here in the next uh, I think week or two, potentially. Um, additionally, we've recently passed a number of uh, resolutions authorizing some larger expenditures for park development within the city, including uh, $62,443 uh, for Memorial Park landscaping, where we're going to be bringing in a contractor to put in a bunch of trees and shrubs throughout the park, uh, $45,000 for New River Mulch at Barnesworth Park. Um, additionally, we have authorized our city administration to begin an RFP process um, to try to find and onboard a, a grant consultant uh, who would be uh, brought in as a consultant uh, to do that writing on our behalf. And, and part of the reason we're doing that is there's just been this tremendous influx of federal funding opportunities over the last two years. Uh, and it's honestly kind of overwhelming how many opportunities are out there and just knowing, knowing of them. And then if you can even find ones that you want to go after, uh, it's a fairly involved process going after a number of these grants. So just I, I think there's a lot of benefit to um, bringing in someone who is familiar with, with uh, the landscape as it currently is and can really help us potentially secure some pretty neat opportunities for the city while we have those available. Um, additionally, we recently had to appropriate another $85,000 for snow removal in the city because we blew through that budget pretty quickly this year with the tremendous amount of snow and hopefully that should be sufficient to get us through the rest of the year. Um, we have also, um, good news last meeting, um, we have been approved for about $60,000 in total funding um, for uh, forgivable loans. Uh, and this is, these are actually two $30,000 forgivable loans to the Alaska Department of Conservation and then also the Alaska Drinking Water and Clean Water Funds. Um, and we will be using that $60,000 in forgivable loan funding um, to begin a new utility rate study. And I believe it's been a good number of years since we last did that. Um, and our utility rates have been locked for a number of years. And I think this is something that the city has historically done o o over its uh, existence where just every so many years we will do a, a very involved analysis of uh, you know, current revenue and expenditure forecasts and, and how we need to adjust our utilities to keep them fair but also be able to, to um, cover the needs of the operations there. Um, and lastly, uh, at our last meeting, we, uh, we did have our, uh, our mini grant uh, uh, application review uh, for this uh, half of the year. Uh, we had two applicants and we ended up uh, granting a award to Project Homeless Connect. Um, and they had previously received this award uh, in the past and they're gonna be using it again to uh, purchase um, small gift cards. I believe they just get like little five or $10 gift cards for meals. Uh, um, with local restaurants, basically just nice little tokens they can give people when they come to the homeless event, uh, homeless connect event, and just um, make them feel that they are valued and welcome, and give them some kind of little uplifting thing that we can do. So I was pleased to see that award happen, uh, and that is all I have, uh, Madam Chair. And I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, to the body. I have a couple. Okay. Um, for the for the person who may come on as the consultant to help write grants, is there, um, I know we have lots of plans with lots of wish lists and we have capital project <laughs> budgets and such what, um, do they already have a list of things that they're gonna try and get funding for or is this just a, a wish list person in general or? Well, that, that's part of the reason that we're bringing them on is because we don't necessarily know 
what we can be applying these grants towards right now. So I think yeah. the first process is let's get someone that's an expert in this brought in, and then they can kind of update our staff on what opportunities exist out there and how those might align with our current planning documents and maybe our capital improvement plans. Yeah. And then I think from that point forward, that's where we start developing, okay, here's going to be our priority list based on where there's overlap between our goals as a city and what opportunities exist out there. Yeah. Um, I guess keep us in mind. I know that there are commissioners on this body who are interested in helping um, either write grants or um, solicit citizen comments or feedback that might support such grants for infrastructure in various forms, whether Certainly. it's more walkable downtown or it's um, et cetera, et cetera, infrastructure that we might be able to apply for with federal funds. Um, I think we'd love to help and maybe we could either give some time or help write the grant or just um, meet up with this person and, and, and try to connect them with some other citizens in the city who could, who could also help. So, I, I think that's a great idea. I will keep that in mind and, and pass it along to city administration. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. No my, my, my last question was um, for that EPA drinking water uh, funding source thing. Is that ever something where we could apply for funds to extend water and sewer lines to the areas in the city that currently are unmet? You know, I, I don't really feel comfortable answering that because I, I just frankly do not know. Yeah, but I, don't I, know think, I think it's a great, uh, a great point that should be explored, but I, I, um, I would be happy to get the answers on that and get back to you. Thank you. <laughs> Quick, get the bus. Yeah, anyone, any other questions for Jordan? Um, and then without that, any seeing any. Um, John, the, our economic development and planning director, please do you have any, any good words for us? Sure, uh, a couple things to share with you. One, I'll start with a, a note I got from, from our acting clerk, Brett. And so she is uh, stressing that your deadline is coming up for getting your uh, APOC reporting done. It's, it's April 15th. and she uh, said she did receive one uh, submission so far, uh, but remember when you do submit, you also need the copy first. So shoot her a copy if you haven't already done that. Um, and so, yeah, for the rest of you, please get your uh, applications in. She stresses that there is actually a penalty. I don't know if the state has ever issued a fine or a penalty, but she, she has brought that up. So just want to share that with you. Um, and then second, uh, there is likely to be a joint work session between the council and the Planning and Zoning Commission on uh, the 23rd of this month. Um, it's, it's tentative, um, and we will, as that gets finalized, or when it gets finalized, I will let you know, you'll get uh, an invitation. But the purpose of that would be to uh, share the similar information that you received at your last uh, couple work sessions with regard to the downtown land uses, those type of things, to have a coordinated discussion with city council uh, on the same thing. So Stephanie and I had a, had a nice meeting with the mayor. He was uh, fully supportive of a, this concept to get both groups together and, and be able to talk about how downtown is changing, what are some of the um, the factors that are um, influencing our, our development, some of the things that we covered in our in our meetings, but the, the council hasn't had the opportunity to hear that. Um, and so what, what that would do, or what we're hoping is that by that date, by the 23rd, we will also have word from EDA, as, as Jordan mentioned, and hopefully have some idea of whether we're gonna get a, a large grant to do some serious planning. If in fact we do get that grant, um, it will uh, provide us then some level of direction and uh, it would give us an opportunity to perhaps even narrow further than what we did as a commission and looking at that broad downtown area, maybe to a, even a more narrow area. Um, so I will keep you posted on that, but I wanted to share that with you. So if your calendars are open on the 23rd, um, typically the council meets um, in the work sessions prior to their meetings. So their, their meetings are at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. And um, I would anticipate this would probably be a, a five o'clock meeting or, or a, a 
or booty or something to that effect. But like I say, um, I'll let you guys know as soon as I do nail it down. Well, there's, there's a few different uh, scenarios. One, one is we've already applied for one grant, the EDA grant, and um, in our application to them, we indicated that we would have been ready to go in January of 2022. Um, that's come and gone. <laughs> we are in March. Um, if it is awarded, we don't know the, uh, the, the timing of it. You know, we don't know what kind of additional hoops might have to be uh, jumped through to get the dollars on the table. Um, and then the, the dollars that, or the grants that uh, Jordan mentioned, that's a whole other set of federal funding that is likely to become available in the next five years. And it could become available in different, uh, in different, time, you know, different times or timing. The scenario, we don't know yet. Some of the programs, they haven't you know, written administrative rules, they haven't written guidelines or notices of the funding opportunities. It remains to be seen. The, the guidebook that they've put out for these federal grants um, so far is almost 500 pages. That's the guidebook. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to keep a close eye on it, and hopefully that, uh, that RFP for a grant writer and researcher will come in handy to help us um, identify the appropriate pots of money and uh, put it towards our, our priorities. Uh, I also wanted to share with you that, um, and, and I can't recall if I've done this already, but the annual APA or the Alaska chapter of the APA, their conference is coming up here in a couple, three weeks. And so either Jen or I or both will be sending you an email tomorrow sharing with you the details of the, um, the program, how to register. Um, we do have funding, so if you would like to go, um, just let Jen or myself know that you want to go, and we will get you registered. It's a, it's a virtual-only conference this year, but it's usually a two-day conference, and we'll share all the details with, with you tomorrow. Um, it's the Alaska chapter of the American Cotton Association. So um, it's usually a, a two-day event with... Um, folks like yourself from other parts of uh, the state, the planning commissioners, planners, uh, people in, in local government that have an interest, and they talk about similar types of issues that, that you guys see here at the local level. We found out today that um, our annexation appeal um, will be heard next week, Thursday, at 2.30 p.m., and that will be uh, on Zoom, we believe. And there, too, if there's an interest, uh, when we get the details or a link, I'd be happy to share that with you guys. If you'd like that, I'll just shoot it out. And, okay. 2.30, next Thursday. Uh, it's, that's, that'll be an opportunity to listen, obviously, um, but it'll, it'll be the, the attorneys uh, presenting their, their cases before the judge. So, exciting. And then last... Um, Mayor Whitney was going to be here tonight, and he sends his regrets. He was not able to um, make it tonight, um, but he did want to share with you a couple things. One was that uh, at next week's council meeting, he will be making a recommendation for appointment to this body uh, for another commissioner. So uh, we should have uh, one more member. And then he also wanted to share that he will be forwarding two names to the Kansman Silk Borough for this, the city seat on the Burroughs Planning Commission. So he'll be uh, sending Charlene's name forward along with uh, uh, Linda Hutchins. So then um, the mayor will have the opportunity to, the mayor of the borough that is, will have the opportunity to you know, forward those names or one of those names to the assembly for confirmation. And that is all I have. And Charlene has a comment right now. Yeah, hi. It was, the comment was related to the work session. Um, that's going to be the 23rd. I just, prior to this meeting, set um, another meeting for 530 on that day. <laughs> so, 
Um, do you know, have any information on what time it is? I could try to reschedule the other meeting. I have um, an idea. Most likely it would probably be uh, either, uh, it'd be somewhere between 4.30 and 5. It would likely start. It really depends on how much time we would anticipate uh, is necessary for discussion. But um, yeah, please let us know if you can't make it. Um, Obviously, for us to have a joint work session, we need we need uh, commissioners and we need council members. So uh, right, and I would love to make it. And I just prior to this rescheduled another meeting for the twenty third at five thirty. Um, and then I'm looking at the conference, that virtual planning conference. Um, I got an email on that, and that's March twenty second to twenty fourth. So I don't know if that would conflict um, with the four thirty start time at all. It shouldn't. Usually, those those sessions are are over about that same time. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and I, I'll get back to you. Um, I can see if I can try to reschedule that meeting to Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Please let us know because uh, I will. I'll be working on that next. Day. <laughs> okay, and anybody else, I know I've already heard from, from one person, and um, if you can't make it, you know, at least we can share then uh, that, yeah, we're going to have a deficit and we may need to find another date. Right, thank you. I'll, tr I'll try to see if I can change that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Right. Cool. Um, thank you, John. Associate Planner Jenny Kowalski. We have two code enforcements that I need to report to you. And one's a signed code violation that we're working on. And then another is we had a complaint, but it turned out that there's no code violation that existed. Thank you. Doing the Lord's work. Good job. Do not, do not envy that, that work. All right. Um, Commissioner comments. I'm going to. Thank Sorry, just, Mr. Burton. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, two comments. First, uh, about the APA uh, virtual event. Uh, I thank you for offering the opportunity for us to attend that. I saw the email and was hoping we'd be able to attend that again this year. So thank you for that. Uh, and then second, th this is a, a bit of uh, a question that uh, I'm seeking clarification on. So the last month when we had our our meeting and we talked about the downtown uses uh, over the past month I've been thinking about some of the areas and one of the areas which is sort of the uh, unicorn uh, pieces of land in the downtown is that area uh, right by the river by the bridge which is already owned uh, <clears throat> and so from the last meeting meeting I learned that I believe now correct me if I'm wrong part of that land was replatted uh, to basically cordon off the contaminated uh, area. Is, is that correct? I believe, yeah. I mean, I, I can't speak to it with certainty because I don't know the extent of, of the, the plumes. And, and But yes, it's my understanding that, the, um, that there was a separate lot that was created that was intended to uh, yeah, encompass okay. the contamination. And so, so my question is, as we press forward and um, one of the individuals who was here had discussed uh, the city trying to reacquire land back, and if that contamination posed an issue in a potential acquisition like that, is there um, funding, like through the EPA, I looked up some funding uh, and found the Brownfield grants. Now, is that something we could look into to apply uh, towards essentially a potential acquisition to make that financial acquisition a little uh, less burdensome? Absolutely. That's, um, you know, as we, we've just discussed here a little bit, you know, we're talking about, you know, priorities and concepts and, and what the what are the types of things that we might have a grant writer look at? That's that's one of them for sure. Yeah, that that's one that's uh, would be on my list anyway. That I, that I'll be forwarding is is there an opportunity to look for funds that would help us do exactly what you're suggesting? Uh, 
I don't have any comments. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jordan. You. Um, Charlene, any commissioner comments? Um, no comments. Thank you. Hopefully I'll be there in person next time. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. We can trade. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm excited to hear uh, the updates. Thank you, Jordan and John. And um, I guess for the joint work session, hopefully on the 23rd and maybe another day, if not enough of us can, can be there, I will be out of town, but can join by Zoom. Um, and, and I'm excited to talk about some of the things we talked about at our last meeting. And I'm just curious, are you gonna share the same presentation that you guys made that was a good one or will it be that plus some or just so that we're prepared to to have good questions and comments it would be very similar yeah there would be a lot of the same basic information you know john did a lot of research we have a lot of information regarding existing land uses and what kind of um what we're seeing in the downtown what we're not seeing in the downtown so it would be that would be kind of the the um the introduction to the discussion and then like I say, the, the other piece would be, you know, do we have this EDA grant? And if it does, mm -hmm. how does that then influence the direction that we go? And so, the, you know, one of the purposes of this um, joint session would be really for everybody to um, have a common understanding to, to, for us to, to receive direction from, from council um, as far as, you know, what we're going to pursue and how we're going to do it. Um, and so... Um, it would cover some of some of the old stuff, but hopefully a lot of new stuff as well. Yeah, and I remember you mentioned that this EDA grant is perhaps for studies for perhaps how to make a downtown zoning district, correct? But also could be used in addition to that plan for some immediate um, incentives or carrots or other mechanisms like a, 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 an invest w in local businesses or whatever fund that we have for our city. So what um, I guess is are the parameters of the grant in terms of being able to use it for a study versus uh, some carrots? Well, the, uh, the grant itself... Um, has has a number of very specific elements that uh, that are included. Um, there wasn't specific mention within the grant application itself as far as one of the items being the you know development of, of carrots to that effect. So that that, that was not included, um, but it, can, it certainly can be part of our our larger strategy and be included and rolled into that that whole overall design. Um, one of the things that I would anticipate happening here uh, in the, the joint work session is when when we met and talked, you know, our geographic area that we looked at was um, it wasn't as large as the entire commercial district, but it was still fairly large when you look at um, the area that we applied for this EDA grant. The the area that we applied for the EDA grant is smaller still than what we looked at in our in our work session. So it focuses even further. And so I anticipate one of the changes or one of the things that we will talk about in this joint work session is even a narrower look. And where we were looking, I think, in in a much I think a broader uh, sense at um, kind of the the longer term vision, what we and I can't say this is for sure, but what I'm what I'm imagining is that we may have to do a, a shorter term vision um, because we're looking at, you know, anywhere from an uh, 18 month to a two year planning process. Do we need to do something here in the very short term while this plan is developed? And that plan, as you mentioned, will include recommendations for things like zoning and hopefully some some other tools and techniques for us to encourage the types of business that we want to see. So we may need a short-term stopgap. How do we preserve our status quo and, and keep things um, from developing into something that we don't want in the short term while we develop our long-term plan? So anyway, those will be some of the types of questions that we would be uh, considering in, in the joint work session. Thank you so much. Is there anything that we can do to prepare or um, any other places that we should 
we should look at the month has flown by and um, I have been sort of digging and I would encourage all other commissioners to do a little digging in what's working well in other communities and try and share some examples. I don't have uh, any suggestions as far as um, preparation. I, I, um, w when we do the announcement um, and give you an update on you know, when it is and what time, if we have some suggestions on that, we'll, I hope we give them to you at that time. Thank you. I think, I think that's, that's, that's the end of the official business. Um, the meeting is adjourned. The next regular meeting of the Soldana Planning and Zoning Commission will be held on April 6th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. Thank you.